This is ENP Reports from Editor and Publisher Magazine, the authoritative voice of news media since 1884, serving newspapers, broadcasts, digital, and all multimedia news publishing. And greetings once again, Mike Linder, publisher of ENP Magazine, must do housekeeping or I get in trouble. <laughs> if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, by all means, follow us. Watching us on our YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button below me, smash the bell to the right, get an update each and every time we upload a new episode of ENP Reports. I, I was introduced to a gentleman named Dave Stevens by my wife, Robin, who most of you know is the editor-in-chief of ENP Magazine. And Dave, you just dazzled my wife with your energy, your your philosophy. She immediately said, this guy's got to be on the program. If I may introduce you, Dave, yes, you're a broadcast veteran. Yes, we want to talk about the work you're doing at Quinnipiac Tech, say it again, the university. Quinnipiac University, yeah. Quinnipiac Tech University, of course, where you're doing ability media. But more importantly, if I may be so bold and I looked at your background, you do not, you have you have a very, you have a disability. You have, you, have, you don't have legs, correct, sir? Yeah, I mean, people label that as a disability. I was born without legs, but, uh, you know, my story might be the greatest sports story never heard because I was able to play three sports in high school. I became the only legless player in the history of college football, the only legless player ever in the minor leagues. And, uh, you know, after that uh, fun time of, of a Walter Mitty type life, I ended up uh, going to ESPN for 20 years. And, you know, I've been in television and, and you know, I've looked at not having legs as my gift. And I try to take that this out of disability. And it's now my job in life to try to teach empathy instead of sympathy. And that's kind of what, uh, you know, my mantra. I'm really looking forward to this interview. Stick around as we talk with Dave Stevens on the backside of this message. This episode of ENP Reports is sponsored by IQ Audience Plus by Town News. Consumer revenue has never been more important. Digital leaders at media organizations worldwide are asking the same question. How do we accelerate the growth of consumer revenue? Traditional one-size-fits-all paywalls aren't the answer. They're blunt instruments that treat all visitors the same way, costing you money. IQ Audience Plus by Town News is a smart, dynamic metering solution that empowers you to maximize revenue by identifying key audiences, seeding engagement, and growing membership and subscriptions. Ready to supercharge your consumer revenue, grow engagement, and bolster your advertising income? Visit townnews.com backslash EP today to learn more about IQ Audience Plus by Town News. All right, Dave. So again, the disability is a gift, and I love that. I mean, you're basically saying that helped put you in a position to really embrace life. But what I'm finding fascinating is you didn't stop there. You got bit by the broadcast bug, obviously ESPN, and made a name for yourself. But rather than just sit back and make money on the broadcast side, you decided to give back to kids and start this a program called Ability Media. Can you Give me some history here. What motivated you? Why did you decide you that that people with disability need to find be more in in the, in the broadcast and the journalism and and the media industry? So. Well, I, I've got to get credit to uh, Dean Roush at the uh, School of Communications at Quinnipiac for headhunting me. He had this idea of like, can we start television and media and everything for people with disabilities by disabilities and get that word out there. So he uh, reached out to an ESPN alumni who tracked me down because he had seen my videos on the internet of, of me speaking and my podcast and things like that. And uh, since I was in the state, um, they said, Hey, could you come and start this program? So we put in, in place, uh, you know, trying to get kids and students with disabilities seen and unseen. And also those students uh, with just you know, as normal as you can be. And I say, this is my normal. I, I don't have legs. It's, it's, it's not a handicap. It's my normal. It's my gift. A lot of people don't look at that. And so it's on me to teach that confidence, to showcase people. Um, but the worst part to your point, Mike, is that, you know, less than 3% of people with disabilities are either represented in the media, get the acting jobs, are producers, directors, writers, publishers, uh, we just don't get those opportunities because society has kind of ruled us as, you know, oh, we, we have special needs and they can't contribute to society. And so, you know, my entire life from high school to college and, and you know, 
I've done things in my life that I call you guys leggies. If you have legs, I call you leggies. Um, but you know, if you look, if you just strictly looked at my resume as a publisher, you know, you get that resume in front of you and it says, played college football, tried out for the Dallas Cowboys, tried out for the Minnesota twins, the Cincinnati reds played in the same outfield with Barry bonds at the Olympic tryouts, uh, played overseas for team USA. Um, pinch hit for Daryl Strawberry in a minor league baseball game. And then you went dot, dot, dot. Oh, yeah, he has no legs. It's just people can't fathom uh, what we're, you know, we're used to seeing every day. And and the lucky part for me before the internet is most of my stuff is documented. You can Google Dave Stevens and see my videos of me playing sports and doing the things. And, you know, in fact, I was on an old TV show back in the day that kind of launched my career called uh, That's Incredible. Yeah. And on that show with me, there was this little boy and I was wearing artificial legs at the time. And this little four or five year old kid is, is chipping golf balls off my legs. And I'm kind of getting annoyed, but I'm nervous because I'm about to go on TV before millions of people. And the kid keeps doing it. And I look over at him. I look at his dad and his dad says, Tiger, stop doing that to that man. So I was on the <laughs> same TV show with Tiger Woods at age five. And the video is there. You can, you can Google Dave Stevens and Tiger Woods. That's incredible. So, I've lived a Forrest Gimp life. I've done these things that people would only dream about doing. And now, you know, with Ability Media, I'm trying to give those kids that opportunity so they can see that a guy without legs can win seven Emmys, that they can see I don't have to show my disability on camera or on, on air or on the microphone or writing and publishing and directing and producing. Um, we all have these gifts. And sometimes in the last couple of years, because of the pandemic and things that have taken place with George Floyd and all those travesties, the handicap world has now really taken a back seat. Uh, diversity doesn't seem to include us anymore. That kind of, that, that terminology for diversity has changed. Uh, so we're kind of left back here going, Hey, we got some people with some value and thank God for Quinnipiac university for giving us that chance to be that voice, to be that platform. And you can see our programming, you can see what we do and, you know, I'm taking five kids to the Super Bowl to get that experience that what, what university gives those kids those opportunities. So thankfully, with my blessings in life, I mean, I, I still pinch myself every day that I can still make an impact. You know, I turn 57 next month and I'm still running around on my arms and speaking and, and holding football and baseball camps for kids and things like that with disabilities. So uh, as long as I can continue to do what I can do and, and let people see me for an example and not feel sorry for me. Um, I'm doing my job. Well, I, I urge the 80% of our of our audience who does not watch our video. I mean, most of my audience, I don't even know why it's waste on doing the, the, the video part of this, because it's all Spotify and um, Apple download. I mean, because we, we watch the numbers. But Dave is not sitting here looking for sympathy, ladies and gentlemen. He is wearing a Christmas hat. We're recording this at Christmas time. You've got blinking lights around you. You've put this beautiful Christmas scene behind you, but if you lean to the side, your Emmys are right behind you as well. As part of, do you have them all behind you there? You're yeah, they're they're here on the side if they can see covered up by you know I, I associate at Christmas time with the land of the misfits because I was, the land of the misfit twins felt, right? felt like a misfit myself, and I've got my buddy up here going, "It was a Charlie in the box," you know those guys that I always associated with. So uh, this is kind of my set for my national podcast that we do. Uh, and, and I'm very blessed that aside from Quinnipiac, you know, I, I had a Hall of Fame pitcher on last week, Burt Blyleman, and Chris Long was on this week, and Rocky Blyer came on to talk about uh, the tragic passing of, of uh, Franco Harris. And, and I'm connected to so many different things that well, who I'm listens? Still doing, you know, this who, thing. So. Who listens to you? Is it anybody, people like us leggies, or do you have a very, very large audience of people? Uh, I, I, I'm using the term disability, but you think this, you just, I mean, what is the real term I should be using? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it, it's like when people introduce me, I just want them to say he was born without legs because right. again, when, when that term handicapped or disabled, you lump us all in together with people that are blind, people that have uh, special needs with their, with their intelligence, like, you know, we just get thrown into this melting pot that describes us, but it's not who we are individually. Yeah. If you're black, you're black. If you're Jewish, you're Jewish. You don't get to join that. You know, you are born into it. That's your ethnicity. But in our world, you could become disabled at any given moment. You could be in a car accident. You could have a stroke. You could fall down. You could be hit by a car. You could, you know, so 
we don't like to continue to open up our world to others. But what, what we're really trying to do is to, to showcase that if an old guy like me without legs can do the things that I can do, there is no excuse for anybody listening to your podcast or out there still going, well, what's my excuse? If, if you know, what would Dave do? What, you know, how would I overcome that? And then I look at it like people are way worse off than me. I can get around in my arms and do the things that I do in my wheelchair. And like I said, your listeners and viewers are going, how could a guy do this without legs? And, you know, there wasn't a book, how to play sports for dummies with no legs. I just had to go out and evolve. And that's kind of what we have to do as a society is to evolve, to accept uh, more and more things. I know a lot of legislators are trying to create better travel uh, things for people with wheelchairs and disabilities. The fashion world is opening up to, uh, I'm on Runway of Dreams, which is an amazing charity that is creating clothing that's adaptive. I was a model on Fashion Week uh, last oh, year. And, so, and you well know. deserved, sir. <laughs> as, as so, All right, but um, let's, let's talk yeah. about a big issue in my in our industry. Because, um, you know, we've, we're, we're news publishers, mostly newspapers. I spoke at 18 conferences this year. The audience is mostly, I mean, I, it's a funny story, Dave. When I entered the industry obliquely from broadcast back in 1998, I was told it was an industry dominant of fat old white men. Now, I'm a, now a fat old white man, but it hasn't changed much. I mean, and that's the problem because it pushes down into our environments. We're supposed to be the voices of the communities we represent. I mean, that thought, if you want to really get into history, I mean, that Madisonian final check on power, the fourth estate, the, you know, the, the, the unfettered press. And then all we hear about is now diversity, diversity, diversity. We actually have a diversity section on our website, but it's mostly about people of color. I, it's funny, I, on this very program nine months ago, I'm setting you up to talk about it, was the Military Veterans in Journalism. This is another homegrown organization that's saying, you know, you know, a large percentage of our society are vets. Many of them are highly trained in the field how to do journalism, but less than 1% of the newsrooms in America contain veterans. We've also had indigenous population. I mean, I guess I could call, you know, the, the, the indigenous population of America, we've had their representatives on this program to say, you know, we're a large part of the United, of, of North America, but we're not represented in the newsrooms today. How would it be a benefit to the communities we serve, large and small, across this vast nation, if there were more people with disabilities within our newsrooms and our, our news environments, sir. And, and I have found, you know, because we have at any given moment, 15 to 20 students, uh, leggies, unseen, ADHD, and, and it helps us to have guys like you, Mike, or, or, or see us and, and then start writing stories from your perspective of now what you've opened your eyes to, like I challenge people, go to the store the next time you go to a Walmart or a Target. Because of the need to get our stuff to our cars, they've taken away most of the handicapped spots and put them far away so you can park right in front and have somebody walk that stuff out to your car. And meanwhile, we're, you <laughs> know, so, no, it's, it's so true. It's, it's and that's so the thing, you know, um, and so now giving these students opportunities to say, hey, wow, this, this world really isn't built for us. And the East Coast, if you see a lot of these places, they have these crazy grandfather laws that they won't create ramps or rails or anything because they're an old library or an old town hall or whatever, or all these businesses. And I can't go to these you know, coast cities and, and take part in restaurants and things like that. And as we get older as a society, we're finding more and more cures more and more things to extend our life, give us a quality of life. We just found a drug that might help people with Alzheimer's. So it's like we need to get with the 90s and start getting more and more opportunities, not only in structure, but the people that build buildings, uh, you know, all these, uh, you know, engineers and things like that. They think they know what's best when you put the ramps all the way at the side of a building. And it's like, well, how come I can't get there? At point A to point B, if it's supposed to make our people with disabilities and severe disabilities easier, why do we have to go around to a back to an elevator? Why do we have to take a low rising elevator that gets used once a year? You can't find the key to it, you know. Um, but as far as in the media, I think sometimes they're just afraid to take challenges, um, you know. And, and that's like when I was at ESPN, I was the first person with a disability at ESPN. And you then another it. guy. Who, you were the first. Yeah. Yeah. visually yes and uh you know this was 1995 and then they hired another guy who ended up being in a wheelchair and sadly his name was dave 
So anytime I went somewhere in the cafeteria, they're like, hey, do you know Dave? Why? Because he's handicapped and he's the only other one. You know, you, you get that ignorance sometimes of people that just like I've had people I walk by a door and it's the stairwell down to the door. And they're so into wanting to be wonderful and generous that they'll open the door and hold the door to the stairwell. And I'm like, I'm in a wheelchair. Are you carrying me down these stairs? Like, you know, it's just sometimes people overreact to wanting to be nice and kind. And I think as a publisher and a, and a manager, sometimes they're like, well, should I grade my journalist or my writer harsher or take it easier on him? Because he, you know, it's like, so, you know, we just want that equal opportunity to put that stuff out there. And so if more and more people would take that opportunity to give us the chance to be on air, if you look, you know, like I, I keep re referencing, but you can go see me on camera. I'm on camera, on my butt, on the ground, talking to famous athletes and doing the things that I do. I do great interviews with all these people when it's when we can be in person, and it brings a unique perspective to these athletes and entertainer because they're they don't know I'm the, that elephant in the room, and suddenly I have done my homework and we talk about things that they wouldn't expect someone to talk about, and they open up, and then we become friends, and 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 it opens up contacts, and it just changes that perspective. Like there's more of me, like me out there. So we need these kids, these young kids, to get these opportunities, not only in publishing, but the opportunity to run for Congress or to become a mayor or that, because, you, again, you talk about diversity uh, in our White House and our Congress and everything like that. And I believe there's there's one senator that lost her legs that is, is you know, a, a part of, of that democracy. But we don't, you don't see a lot of, it is that good old white boys network that still continues well, to run okay, our country so and take care of that. I'm only allowed to do 30 minutes because I love that. I love talking and you obviously do too, sir. I hope you don't mind. I mean, you should, and, and I always get uh, people email me saying you should never be more than 20 minutes. And I usually go to 30 or 40, the heck with them. Snarky. But here's the thing. I see two issues here, two different sides you're battling. Number one, the first thing you could have done when you were, and, and, and the, your disability goes beyond the fact that you were born with no legs. I, it's right there on your website. It's going to say it. You had a 15-year-old biological mom who gave up on you. You were put into foster homes. You were told you were going to be institutionalized. Thank God the Stevens family adopted you, correct? These were people with love that gave yeah. you the love you need. So you were you could have spent your whole life just feeling sorry for yourself, right? Just, you know. Well, on top of that, dirt poor. We moved 13 or 14 times. I went to five or six different schools. What was my future going to be? You know, right. it's like, yeah. here's this kid with no legs. Odds are against him. He wants to play sports. That's crazy. You know, all those things that I've overcome. But again, go live in an institution, go sit on the side of society. We'll throw a few bones. And that's the way it should. you said that. But you didn't do it with bitterness. You didn't look at people and say, how dare you? You just you just ran with the ball. If I may you know, use a sports metaphor. So you're trying to enforce that energy into people in one way. Correct, sir. And it sounds like you're doing that through this program, Ability Media. And I'm going to say it right. Quinniac. Quinnipiac University in Connecticut. The Q. Just say the Q. Just say the Q. Okay, now, the other side of the story you're talking about is the prejudice in all of us in our society. Let's be blatant. You just said it. If our society truly was that, we are not a democracy, we're a republic, I'm sure you know that, then the elected leaders who make our decisions, every other one should be a woman, correct? Every In today's society, 45% uh, should be of some form of color, and every fifth or three and a half we should, should have some gender identity of their own. And we should be okay with that, correct? We should just be walking around with absolutely no predetermined idea of the soul of an individual based on any of this stuff. You're talking about that. I'm getting a little teary because you're battling that too, correct? Not you, but those with, okay, we leggies or whatever, those people who were born that not look like us have to deal with every day so you're looking at it at both angles am i correct sir and trying to fix it on both sides out there on the media talking to us the leggies if i can use your term but then helping those that get born feeling sorry for themselves to say screw it <laughs> if i may just go out and do it am i right yes but there's that that fine line that i have to battle of like you know it's like we find a great role model like Tim Tebow, but everybody says, oh, he's talking about God and religion and, and it's overblown and they get sick of it. So if I continue to go, I'm an inspiration and I'm a hero and all that, I'm not. I, I try to lead by example. But to your point, you know, 
society does judge a book by its cover. So you see me in my wheelchair immediately. I feel sorry for that man in the wheelchair, you know, or I, I feel sorry for that old woman on her walker. Um, but as a society, we don't embrace that diversity where why couldn't someone who uh, has cerebral palsy create the weapon system for the military? Why do I have to be able to have legs and run to be able to be in the army to contribute or to be a 911 operator or a detective uh, because I can't carry a knapsack filled with 40 pounds? We have to break away from the stereotypes of what the expectations are on the physical uh, requirements for jobs and for what the about things that we do in society. But Frank Loudon, Delano Roosevelt been president today in our multimedia culture, do you think? I highly doubt it. He hit it so well that even today we still don't know how he overcame the things he did. And when they said his polio was so bad that, you know, he had to stand up and, and, and talk before Congress and speeches and the man could barely, barely move. Um, but And I know, understand there was, there was great pain in those days with those leg braces. It wasn't like yes. today where you have a science and people dedicated at least to making it a little bit more comfortable. Yeah. He could not have been our leader. That brain would have not had the ability to do what it did to pretty much save the free world. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. Um, but, okay, so now you've got an audience here. You've got an audience of between three and 4,000 people who govern a large part of our media and our society and their newsrooms, our newsrooms, do not reflect America. That's the biggest issue. I spoke... At many conferences this year, and I, or last year, it depends when I broadcast this puppy. <laughs> That's where obviously the way you're dressed, we're broadcasting at the end of 2022. We're recording it. And it's Happy New Year, right? There you go. Happy New Year. Let's let's say I do it in February. Let's do a Valentine's yeah. Day routine very quickly. What I'm saying is, how do you get us to represent our true world that we're talking to? That seems to be the now we're all going in. Don't you agree? Now we're all going to what they call echo chambers. I'm going to only listen to MSNBC. I'm only going to go to CNN. I'm going to Fox. I'm only going to read publications that deal with me. How do we, I'm giving you your, your floor, sir. You got those publishers. You got those news executives. Tell them what the hell they have to do. Ladies and gentlemen, just, just open up your eyes and ears and, and let uh, more people have that voice. And, and it doesn't have to be overnight, but if, if you have, you know, if you have a political writer, you have a, uh, uh, you know, a columnist who, who takes in letters, uh, you, you have a sports person, you have that, you can create something to cover diversity and, and, and it can cover both sides. Again, it doesn't have to be about white or black. Uh, it gets back to that word of, okay, let's open up our eyes. You know, we cover things with Ability Media. I was just at Yale with some students a couple of weeks ago where we covered um, four, five employees that came out to talk about their disability for the first time in public and how moving that was. And we created content that people can see on our websites. And again, it, it's about getting those stories out there. So it's like, you know, Mike, you might have a cousin or an uncle or a daughter or someone who has ADHD or has I overcome do. something I'll, or that. I'll so it proudly. Like, I have a daughter on the spectrum. Okay. I, she's got her issues and she was bullied like you wouldn't friggin' believe. Okay. And and as a, as an early parent, would you like to have known that there were ways to help with teaching or giving her opportunities to learn how to? We were misdiagnosed past, and mis yeah. and misprescribed for for years. Yes, I am angry and bitter. I'm sorry. I have to get. <laughs> I'll go pray. But go ahead, sir. I'm like you keep talking. No, I'm I'm just saying for everybody out there, uh, you know, instead of worrying about that quota of you know, black or white, or I need to have an LGBTQ or all these things that we now check off the box. I got to hire, got to hire, got to hire. Box, yes. like, like, you know, we're not asking for special attention. We're just asking for attention. And there are great writers and young producers and directors. I was just part of a, uh, a lab in New York of all, all these disabled actors. And I was a voiceover actor for a Netflix project of putting together programming written produced and edited by people with disabilities there's a lot of us out there we just we just gotta you know knock 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 and and have people listen and and hopefully again if, if people can see by example of, of what i've done i've been in tv for 40 years like i can't believe i started at age 16 as an intern in minnesota and and to watch my growth and development and and the career path i've taken now it's important for me to give back. As long as I can walk on my arms, I'm going to go out there and show people that when I speak as a motivational speaker or I'll be at the Super Bowl, um, I just signed 
to go do a uh, stand-up comedy gig in Las Vegas. So I'm going to do stand-up comedy. I call it sit-down comedy. I'm about to say, I, but I'm, I'm part of this this thing in Vegas. They, they have five disabled comedians, and they want to start a tour with us, like that Redneck Comedy Tour. So I've got to work on, you know, uh, 15 minutes of material, and uh, it's, it's very challenging to do those kind of things. But again, it will open up people's eyes to go, there's a dude on stage with no legs who's got the courage to come out there and do that. So why can't I ask my boss for a raise or go out and try to do something locally for my community or, you know, all these things that it's better to try and fail than to sit back and daydream and wish and be that guy that's talking about, I threw that touchdown in 1983 when I was a quarterback, you know, it's like, we have to continue to evolve to make an impact in society, especially as messed up as this world is. You know, and everything that's going on. And you're very blessed, right? You have your three three children, correct, sir? And three have... teenage boys, and uh, you know, all healthy, playing baseball. Uh, you know, I live vicariously through them now, and uh, you know, I'm so proud that that's another <laughs> a half hour topic of being a parent with a disability, trying to parent uh, kids, and and you know, push push shopping carts and car seats and oh, things yeah. when you don't have legs, and giving them that normal life. So my kids are not phased by anything. In fact, they don't even care. They, my celebrity doesn't impress them. The people I meet, nothing, you know, but if I get a good score, they look I get a good score on Call of Duty with them, it's very impressive, you know, so. It's what we all strive for. We, 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 we say that we look at someone's soul and that's how, and, but we all have that prejudice just from the ecosystem we're born in. Dave Stevens has a website. And I love it. It, it, it. Dave Stevens Speaks dot com. That's an easy one to spell. And you can get there. You can book Dave to speak. You can learn a lot about him. But Ability Media Group at the Q. I didn't even bother saying the university. See? Yeah. Has a website as well. Ability Media Group dot com. Let me say that again. Ability Media Group dot com. That's where a publisher can reach out. To learn more about Ability Media, which is created by the School of Communications at Q to address a pressing need across all media. I'm, I'm reading this right from your mission statement. The lack of representation of people with different abilities in how we do the content and the jobs that we have. When we think diversity, this is me now in my soapbox in our industry, stop being narrow. I mean, man, military veterans in journalism, what? I'm, I can imagine, Dave, hiring someone that's been in battle. Can you imagine someone <laughs> in your newsroom would, would have more energy? And that more perspective. Energy? That's why I'm, I'm so blessed. I didn't lose my legs tragically. I didn't go through mentally what those, I, and I play football with the Wounded Warriors and I do, I'm do. i doing an event in Arizona right. at the Super Bowl with vets. Um, and, it, and it's like, again, that, that perspective for your publishers and your writers is going to give you an in that nobody else. So when we're talking about the Ukraine, what's going on? What is that like when you, what are you thinking about when you're being bombed or, you know, you get that perspective rather than just setting a correspondent cover, you know, they, they just don't, they, their life isn't on the line or they didn't lose comrades or people in that, you know, so that's why, I'm, you know, I'm so glad you've given us this opportunity to discuss it. And, and if people want to have fun, please follow Dave Stevens Speaks on social media. You can see my goofiness on TikTok and YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. And, and I do a lot of funny stuff because again, I'm always trying to show that oh elephant God. in the room. You know, if you're going to stare at me, I might as well give you a show. I I think that's great. I think that's one of the best ways just to alleviate tension and pressure. I love the way you set up the set. Again, if you're if you're listening to this on Spotify, do me a favor. Just just hit our YouTube channel and take a good look at Dave. Dave is having the time of his life in this interview, and I really appreciate it. Well, now he's doing a spin around in his wheelchair. <laughs> Dave, thank you for your valuable time. I hope you have you and your family stay healthy and happy and keep up the good fight, sir. Keep that energy flowing. And thank you for what you're doing. I know in this day and age, it's challenging to continue to try to publish as you know, the internet yeah. has wiped out newspaper, but you guys have re-evolved and figured out ways with videos and things like that. And if an old man can do all the things I do on a cell phone, I can teach that as well to people. We can put out quality programming content and give you guys that opportunity to have a voice. So thank you so much for having me on. Our honor and pleasure.